if your team is top of the league and North London is red, like this video. Unbelievable, man. Welcome to the Loaded Cannon. And the cannon was firing today. I just cannot get over how incredible that performance was. And do you know what? It's like, it's a weird, weird feeling right now because I'm not even like buzzing. I'm not, I'm, obviously I am, but I'm not going crazy. It's, it's a weird one because you know what? Usually if someone had said to me, look, it's 2014 was the last time we kept a clean sheet at White Hart Lane. 2014 was the last time we won that same game at White Hart Lane. It's been a long, long time. So if someone had said to me, after Man City losing yesterday, that you're going to go away from home against a team you haven't beaten for eight years with all the pressure that comes with the, your closest rivals for what is a title chase now, I'm not going to hear any different. If someone had said you're going to win 2-0, I would have been like thinking I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. But the performance was so good. There was no risk in the game. I'm not even like, there's no relief. I'm not like breathing a, a big sigh of relief after that game. I wasn't desperate for the final whistle. Um, I wasn't on the edge of my seat. I was calm. I was chilling. It was too easy. And that's why I'm saying like, I'm not even properly buzzing. I'm not like bouncing off the walls. That's how good Arsenal were. You need to realise why I'm saying that. It's not because, you know, I don't care about Arsenal. Obviously, I care about Arsenal. It's because it was so good. The performance was so good. It's, I just cannot believe how good the game management was. It was... It's so rare to see a team manage a game so well. And we did it. We did it brilliantly. I'm just honestly could not be more proud of the team. I, I cannot be more complimentary of Mikel Arteta. What he's instilled in this team, it's in every single facet of our performances. Everywhere you look, every action, every time the ball goes out of play, every time the opposition switch the, uh, switch the ball, you know, it was the bank of six, at times bank of seven at the back when we were defending in a tough period that we needed to get out of early on in the second half. We didn't defend like that all game. We, in fact, there was a point where we were defending with more in our final back line, as I was saying, six or seven, in like the 65th minute than there was in like the 85th or the 95th minute. The game management today was a thing of beauty. It was a work of art. And even at the end, Mikel Arteta, now the final whistle has gone. But the way he himself was dragging players away from the Tottenham fans when some idiot came and kicked Aaron Ramsdale. I haven't seen the footage. Hopefully we get to see that. But what a disgrace that is. And hopefully the FA go absolutely fully uh, throw the book at Tottenham because Arsenal have been fined for crap recently from the FA. The FA take, better take massive action. Not only did a fan kick Ramsdale, another one then came up and tried to uh, get on. He was on the advertising boards or something. It's a joke. Absolute disgrace. Hopefully they get the absolute book thrown at them. But the way Mikel Arteta then took all the team away, the way um, he went back and grabbed Xhaka, who sometimes doesn't know better, um, it, it's just that, honestly, the, the control he has got over this team is phenomenal. And he deserves unbelievable praise because he took unbelievable flack when he had no control over a team that did not respect him and i said at the time he's what he's clearly doing is getting rid of players that are that, that have basically achieved a lot in the game because they don't respect him and fair play to him it had to work when you're doing that because it's like he admitted i can't manage abamian i can't manage Urzel. You know, uh, I can't manage Grinduzi even, for example. Not that Grinduzi had achieved a lot. And he just said, that's it. I can't manage you. You're out. You don't respect me. Fine. I'm not going to beg. Just you're out. And I'm so glad he did it because it's worked. He got that backing and my God, he's delivered. He's absolutely delivered. We're at the halfway mark of the Premier League season now, more or less. And I just, I can't believe where we are. At the start of the season, if someone had said to me, where Chelsea are right now or where Liverpool are right now, if they had said, swap places, 
you know, Arsenal are where Chelsea are, Chelsea are where Arsenal are, or same with Liverpool, and showed me the table as it currently looks with that swap, I would have been like, oh, you know, okay, typical Arsenal. Never in a million years, in my wildest dreams at this point, would I have put Arsenal top, and not just top, looking like the real deal, because I've said so many times before, we're a proper team. We are a proper team. Games are not coin tosses. The way we played today, I can't believe how good we were, man. And let me focus on some of the key, key performers. And do you know what? The game, actually, it was, a, it was a game of two halves. Arsenal were unbelievable in the first half, unbelievable in the second half. And in the first half, we were unbelievable in like a, just like a dominant, dominant way. Second half, we were unbelievable in like a mature, switched on, just t- uh, so like tactically aware in a game management way. And I don't know which one pleased me more because I've seen Arsenal play really, really good football before, like we did in the first half, even though I do think that as, you know, in, in one sense, in a footballing sense, our best half of the season. Second half, though, I that for me was was like answering some of the questions I've got about this Arsenal team. As such a young team, do you really, really know how to keep it together when you're really in like a difficult atmosphere, a difficult environment, away from home, and all of those pressures come in with it? And we did. At no point did an Arsenal player do something that really riled up the Tottenham fans, that gave uh, any wind in the sails of Tottenham. It was just brilliant. Really, really brilliant. I, I'm i shocked. I'm actually shocked. Players I want to call out, Aaron Ramsdale. My God. If you're watching on Sky Sports, you would have seen a stat come up. He kept a clean sheet today with expected goals against him of about 2.3, I think it was. 2.34, something like that. That is phenomenal. Some of the saves he pulled off from Sun in the first half. Um, there was the Kane header. Sessegnon in the second half. Brilliant save. I'm, I'm just losing track because... He was absolutely brilliant today. And on the other hand, look, Lloris actually pulled off some really good saves from Enketia on a couple of occasions, but made that crucial mistake. And, you know, perhaps didn't do well enough on the Erdegaard shot, which I'm not taking anything away from Erdegaard. He was brilliant. But Ramsdale, man, just showed the levels. He was perfect. Let me repeat that. Aaron Ramsdale's performance was perfect. And if I was an opposition fan, I would want to kick him. Because he was so flipping good. He was untouchable up to the point where a fan had to come and kick him. It's the only way he was going to get touched. Aaron Ramsdale, without him, that game would have been very different. Easy to manage the game, as I'm talking about, with that game management and not letting any win go in the Tottenham sales when your goalkeeper is that on point. Gabriel, marking one of the best strikers in football. And listen, you might not want to hear that because, yeah, he's a Tottenham player, but I rate Harry Kane very, very highly. The performance that Gabriel put in against him, and it was primarily Gabriel more more so than Saliba, but they both had very good games. But Gabriel was brilliant against Harry Kane today. Absolutely brilliant. If any defender wants to know, how do I mark Harry Kane? That's how you do it. He was brilliant. Only that one chance in the first half did Harry Kane get in between our centre-backs. Otherwise, for me, Gabriel took ownership, pocketed Harry Kane. Then we come to Beauty and the Beast. Beauty was bought by Martin Erdegaard and Beast Mode was bought by Thomas Partey, especially in that first half. And in the second half, instead of focusing on individuals, it was an unbelievable team effort. Everyone was so in tune with one another. Honestly, just I'm absolutely delighted. We are eight points clear. Can you believe that? We are eight points clear. No Arsenal fan in their right mind. Now has the audacity to claim we are not in a title race. Embrace it. We are in a title race. No guarantees that we're going to win. We still have to play Man City twice. We've got a big game against Man United coming up. But I asked the question, when, before we played Brighton, said Brighton, Newcastle, Tottenham, Man United, how many points is a good return from those four games? And a lot of people were like nine, ten, that sort of thing. We've already got seven. We've already got seven. So now if we can, you know, go and beat Man United at home, we get that 10. And that is an unbelievable return. Man City have had a tough run of games. They lost today. You know, Arsenal's consistency has been unbelievable. And what I want to end on here 
Is there anyone that was crying about Mudrick, throwing their toys out the pram about that? Get flipping real and get out of that flipping child mode because points are what matters, not transfers. We can go and sign another player. With that 70-odd million, we wouldn't pay it up front, never mind the optional extras and everything. We can go and get, I don't know, a Tielemans or a Trossard and a Zaha, two out of the three, all three, who the hell knows, and really strengthen our squad. There's so much we can do. Stop crying because you watch a few YouTube compilations of a player that has played less than 30 games in the Ukrainian league. This Arsenal setup, know what they're doing. Clearly, is they're doing it so well. All of the additions have delivered. Look at how, Bell, how well Ben White, Aaron, Aaron Ramsdale, Gabriel, Saliba are all playing these days. Zinchenko, look at how well they're playing. Even in Ketia, they gave him the contract. Look at how well he's playing right now. Gabriel Jesus, how good has he been? I mean, come on, give them their dues now. As supporters, let's support. Because you cannot cry and go on about Mudrik as if, these guys are clueless anymore because they they deserve some respect now. There was a time where criticism was due and now there's a time where praise is due for Vinay, for Edu, for Arteta, for Richard Garlic, for whoever the hell we're talking about because we're flawless right now. So stop crying over Mudrik. Yes, we do need to strengthen. We're in an unbelievable position. It would be criminal if they didn't, but there's time left. And when another team says, do you know what, we're going to blow our transfer budget or our wages budget for this player, maybe to get one over on Arsenal, what should we do? Dance to the tune of Chelsea and the money that they've got? Don't be flipping ridiculous. There's one reason why Arsenal are doing so well right now, and that is squad harmony. And by going and breaking your wage budget, that impacts squad harmony. There is n maybe like three players in the world that I would say, do you know what, that's worth risking. And a player that has played less than 30 games in the Ukrainian league is not worth risking that for. So stop crying, support this team, because we're doing unbelievably well. A points clear, top of the league, just beaten Tottenham away from home with a clean sheet for the first time in eight years. And some of you are crying about Mudrik. Start supporting the team properly. Come on, Arsenal.